Good evening and welcome everyone to this special council meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We have regrets tonight from Councillor Seven and joining me in the council chamber is city clerk, Ms. Defoe. And I will turn the meeting over to the clerk. Through you, your worship, item two is declarations of pecuniary interest. Are there any declarations? And if so, please state the general nature thereof. Seeing none. Item three is adjournment to a public meeting under the Planning Act, and there is a motion that the special council meeting adjourn to a public meeting under the Planning Act to hear from members of the public with respect to the following planning matters. The first one being official plan amendment application OPA 001-22 and zone change application Z07-22. And then the second matter will be zone change application Z08-22 and to reconvene following the public meeting. Is there a mover to adjourn into public? Thank you, Councillor Burback, and second by Councillor Henderson. All in favor? And that's unanimous, thank you. So I'd like to call the public meeting to order. The purpose of this meeting is to give council and the public an opportunity to hear all interested persons with respect to zone change application Z08-22. The application affects the existing R4 zoning provision I am sorry, I think I'm on the wrong one. I am on the wrong one, I apologize. I'll just notice that. So I'm gonna call this public meeting to order. The purpose of this meeting is to give council and the public an opportunity to hear all interested persons with respect to the following application, official plan amendment OPA 001-22 and zones change application Z07-22. The application affects the property uh, with the municipal address of 3980 Road uh, 111 in the city of Stratford. The order of procedure for this meeting will be as follows. Staff will present the application. The applicant or agent will then make a presentation. Council may ask questions for the purpose of clarifying the application, but are cautioned not to make comment nor to take a position on this application at this public meeting. And I'm gonna repeat that item C. Council may ask questions for the purpose of clarifying the application, but are cautioned not to make comments nor to take a position on this application at this public meeting. Uh, registered delegations will be asked for their presentations and comments and questions. Delegates are reminded that their questions and comments should be related to planning. Uh, comments and questions and comments from the Q&A will be read in by the clerk's office staff member. The public is advised that a person, if a person has not provided counsel with oral submissions at a public meeting or written submissions before a bylaw is adopted or a decision is made, the Ontario Land Tribunal has the power to dismiss an appeal. The public is also advised that comments expressed and written material presented are a matter of public record for full disclosure. Are there any questions as to the order of this procedure? Seeing none, we will now proceed with the meeting and we will hear from the staff with respect to the application. And I'm gonna invite Mr. Bannon planner to make uh, the presentation on behalf of the staff. Mr. Bannon. Thank you. The subject lands of the application for the official plan amendment 0122 and zone change application Z0722 are located on the west side of road 111 between line 34 and the city boundary. The proposed plan of subdivision contains 70 street, street townhouse dwelling lots and one storm water management block. The plan of subdivision is proposed to be served by four new local streets with two access points onto road 111. And the lot frontages that are being proposed are for street townhouses and they range from approximately six meters to 11.5 meters. The surrounding land to the north is commercial. To the east are single detached dwellings and an industrial facility. To the south is the CN Railway and to the west is a hydro corridor in a future subdivision. The applications were accepted on July 28th of 2022, and there are several reports submitted in support of the applications, being the planning justification report, a geotechnical investigation, the functional servicing report, 
a noise and vibration study, a transportation impact study, an environmental site assessment, and an archaeological potential evaluation. The subject lands were annexed into the city boundary in 2016, and they're located between the boundary of the East Secondary Plan and the city limit. The area hasn't been designated in the city's official plan, and as a result, it still retains the urban fringe designation from the County of Perth official plan. The applicant is proposing to apply the same medium density residential designation provisions that are found in the adjacent East Secondary Plan, which is to the west, and they would allow for a minimum density of 25 units per hectare, a maximum density of 100 units per hectare, a maximum height of six stories, and a minimum of 40% of new housing units being in forms other than single detached dwellings. The intent of the proposed zone change application is to rezone the subject lands from an urban reserve UR-4 zone to a residential fourth density R4 bracket one zone. That zone permits street townhouse dwellings with a minimum lot area of 180 square meters and a minimum lot frontage of six meters. The application has been circulated for comments. Um, several uh, agencies have provided comments back and uh, of note are the Township of Perth East. Um, they're asking if the owner builds a, an abutting portion of Road 111 to the municipal standard, including sidewalks and lighting as required. Uh, they're ask, also asking that no driveways uh, for the plan of subdivision encroach onto the road, 111, um, that they submit a traffic impact study, which has been submitted and circulated, and that the City of Stratford works with the county to, to petition the MTO to implement better traffic control measures at the intersection of 111 and line 34. So also other, or other comments that have been submitted and they're included in the report. Uh, notice was sent out to 23 surrounding property owners in September, and notice was also published in the Beacon Herald on November 12th of 2022. Three responses have been received from residences. One response was in full support of the application, and the other responses raised concerns relating to the potential for increases in traffic and the need for improvements at the Highway 7 and 8 and County Road 33 intersections. Uh, concern over the potential for increased noise and concerned with access points to the subdivision and headlight glare coming from subdivision traffic and concerned with who would be policing the subdivision and how it would get serviced. I'm available to answer any questions from council or the public. Thank you, Mr. Bannon. Are there any questions from council at this time? Council Burback. Thank you. Through the chair to Mr. Bannerman, I'm curious if the intersection of 111 and uh, Highway 7 and 8 was included in the traffic study. It doesn't seem to be, but I was just wanted to confirm that. Mr. Bannon. Yes, through your worship. Uh, they did look at the traffic impacts on the roadway and the intersections of that subdivision. Um, when I looked at the traffic impact study, it does not look like it looked at the intersections on uh, the highway or on the, the road to the south. Um, but I have not received comments back from the engineering department yet, and they will be doing a, completing a full review of that transportation impact study, and we will discuss their comments with the applicant. Thank you. Anything further from Council? Councillor Henderson. I couldn't really see very well on the on the diagram or the one that we had <clears throat> where the roads are all going to come out. I saw there was a concern from somebody that they were worried where the road was going to come out. Mr. Bannon. And through your worship, I, I think she cut out, uh, at least on my audio at the end, Councillor Henderson did. Um, I have shown um, a sketch to the, the resident that expressed that concern and detailed where those intersection of those roads would be in relation to the properties to the east. I haven't heard back from them yet to find out if they have any further concerns, um, but we will be reaching out to them again before we finalize a report that will be brought forward to the Planning and Heritage Committee. 
Sorry, if I cut out, I just noticed my mute button must have got hit again. Um, I was wondering where the four roads were actually going to come out. I couldn't see them on the plan or if possible, can we get a, a larger version of it so we can actually see what, like is one coming out on um, Durrell Street and one on Ontario Street and two on Road 111. Is that my, am I understanding that correctly or? Through your worship. So there's two roads that will be coming out onto Road 111. Um, so those are how the, the subdivisions can be accessed from the east. There is potentially a, a future connection to that will go through the hydro corridor and that will connect to the cachet development to the west. Um, so that's north of the, the CN railway line. Um, so that, that would be the connections. The, when we talk about the, the city streets, those would be the internal streets to the subdivision, not for access points. Anything further? Councillor Briscoe and then Councillor Burback. Thank you. After your worship, I noticed in the report, um, CN Rail had noise um, concerns. Um, if you could elaborate on any, if the city shares those concerns, um, as well as um, assuming it's townhouses, if there, if noise, if it's close enough to have noise concerns, could there also be safety concerns with townhouses? We usually see families. Uh, apologies for <laughs> my son. Um, uh, if there's any safety concerns and if there's anything that can be implemented to perhaps put up a kind of sort of barriers or anything to prevent uh, access to the tracks. Mr. Bannon. Through your worship. Uh, yes, the, the city will be reviewing that noise study and noise and vibration study. Um, once we have some of those comments back from engineering services, they will be included in that future report that comes back to planning and heritage committee. Uh, typically, you would see those concerns being dealt with through conditions in the plan of subdivision and through the subdivision agreement. Uh, they might be a combination of having uh, noise acoustic barriers along with berming along the railway to make sure that those dwellings that are abutting that section um, are safe for the residents that would be there in the future. Um, at this point in time, we're still in discussions with the applicant about the configuration of the, the subdivision. So there may be further changes that uh, result once we've um, entered into some of those further discussions after this public meeting, after we've heard from the public. Thank you. Councillor Burback. Thank you. Through the chair, uh, I'm just curious about the hydro corridor. Is it directly to the west of the drawing that we see? It's, I can see the railway on the drawing, but I don't see the hydro corridor. So, and I do remember there is another sub proposed subdivision beyond that, but I'm curious if the rail or the hydro corridor is, is right up against those townhouses. Mr. Bannon. Yeah, through your worship, yes, you are correct that uh, that hydro corridor is immediately to the west, so it's on the left hand side of that uh, plan that has been submitted with the report, and um, it does separate the subject lands from the cachet development lands that are to be developed to the west. Anything further? Councillor Briscoe? Thank you, uh, through your worship. Um, just for um, helping public with clarity of terms, um, could you just provide a description of what a street townhouse is? I know that there's stacked and others, but I've had a few questions on just what street specific townhouse means. Mr. Bannon. Through your worship, it is defined in our zoning bylaw, and I don't have the, the exact definition in front of me, but typically a street townhouse will be placed on a block of land um, with several units that are attached together. So uh, typically it's, it's four units or more um, of dwellings that are attached together. And what happens is that once the dwelling has been created, uh, the, the developer potentially would go through part lot control and divide all of those townhouse dwelling units up into individual lots. And each of those dwelling units are separated by a common wall on the interior of the dwelling. Thank you. Anything further? Seeing none, thank you, uh, Mr. Bannon. At this time, I'm going to move forward and ask the representative for the applicant uh, to please make their presentation. Through you, Worship, uh, we're just working to connect the applicants into the meeting. Thank you.
Good evening. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, is, go right uh, ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and the council. Uh, I'm Punya Sagar. I am the um, planner of this project from the provenance side. Uh, I have made a presentation. Uh, it's a quick presentation. Thanks to city planner who has explained almost everything. I didn't have to add anything more onto that. But since I have already presented, I mean, prepared the presentation, I'd like to go quickly over it. Um, and first, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the council for for the new term, and uh, we're uh, very happy to work uh, with this council uh, in the days to come. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, um, as I mentioned, uh, the development is proposed by Paradise Properties Development Limited. Uh, I have Thomas Abraham as representative of the developer in the meeting. I, I hope he is there. Uh, and I'm Punya Sagar, as I mentioned, uh, I'm representing MDNPS. Uh, that's uh, Municipal Development and Planning Services uh, Inc. That's our company, planning company. And uh, I have... Uh, uh, Jamie Dick from MTE Consultants Stratford, who was who is the engineering consultant. Next, please. Um, as uh, I was uh, listening to the presentation, and I I heard that question, and I think this picture is more clear in terms of like where the site is actually located. It's north of CN Rail and east of Hydro Corridor along uh, Street One One One, and uh, further south from that intersection which we talked about, uh, the line 34 and road 111, that's that's where the site is. Uh, next, please. So uh, this picture, I, I'd like to spend a little bit more time on this picture because it's uh, this is this is what we are proposing. And uh, as the question was on like uh, how many, uh, how many streets are coming on to the 111? Like uh, there was a confusion, like four streets. No, there are no, not four streets, rather they are just two streets. One uh, closer to that uh, line 34. Uh, and the next one is closer to uh, the CN rail. And uh, we are, we are uh, thinking and we assume that as per the, the city's transportation master plan, uh, Duro Street is coming to intersect on 111 and we somehow tried to align that uh, so that like uh, when city uh, pursues that uh, um, extension, that will go through our subdivision and there's there's a provision. So the bottom, bottom street, uh, which you can see in the uh, graphic, is a potential extension of Dura Street. And two, those two call this act are, are just internal for, for the services for the block townhouses. And if you could see the arrow uh, on the top north uh, left, uh, left side of this uh, sketch, there's an arrow. There. That's where we are proposing to connect the services because that would be one of the one of the um, questions, I guess, from the engineering, like how we, we're going to serve the the subdivision. So we are proposing this, and we are yet to discuss this with Hydro One for the easement. Uh, but uh, as I know, that city has already circulated our proposal to Hydro One, and uh, we are going to meet and discuss with that uh, with Hydro One uh, as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's it's quick overview. The policy, uh, if, uh, provincial policy suggests for like uh, medium density housing options, and we are proposing medium density ho housing options in Stratford. Uh, so, uh, and, and obviously like uh, we are trying our level best to make it uh, affordable to uh, to the to the people. Uh, and uh, city's uh, official plan also suggests that uh, it's uh, it's within the urban expansion, but it has not yet been designated for residential development. So our proposal is to uh, change the official plan and uh, accommodate it as 
accommodate this land as part of the uh, residential development. So that's that's our intent. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Here, uh, I, this this should be the repetition again. So I'm I'm not gonna spend too much of time on it. But like, yeah, yeah, this land was amalgamated back in 2016 from Perth East, and it's still uh, uh, designated as uh, urban reserve. So we wanted to. Uh, redesignate it for we want to we wanted to designate it for residential so next please uh, this list was already spelled out in in uh, mr bannon's presentation as well so these are the studies we have completed and this is the, these studies we completed following the uh, pre-application meeting with the city uh, which we did back in July, 2021. Uh, and there were a list of studies required and we, we have already completed that uh, studies and submitted the reports to, to the city for, for the review. Next, please. So, um, and uh, we, were, we were very sensitive on uh, following the urban design and landscape guidelines uh, uh, which uh, city of Stratford has. Uh, that is uh, in effect since 2014. So stormwater pond, we have that uh, at the southernmost portion of the uh, subdivision. Uh, that was strategically done uh, to, to address two concerns. One is like definitely the, the uh, topography of the site because it's sloped towards that direction, number one. Number two, uh, we wanted to have a kind of buffer between the residents and the sea and rail, and that was a question uh, earlier. So safety was one of the concerns for, for our so from our side. So uh, it's not only about the flooding, but like uh, distance between uh, between sea and rail and the residents was was important. So we addressed that um, uh, according to the design. Uh, and and uh, the rainfall is also like 200. We we took 250 year uh, 250 years uh, rainfall uh, standards so that like uh, there would be enough space to to hold the rainwater there. Uh, the subdivision is walkable. Uh, it's tree lined, and um, uh, we are proposing well lit streets uh, with uh, sidewalks all around. Uh, and obviously, like we are. Uh, uh, Environmental, environmentally sensitive uh, development we're proposing. Uh, street townhouses, as we talked about, uh, in, uh, as as it was, at the, there was a question about street townhouse and definition for it. Uh, we followed the definition of street townhouse of City of Stratford zoning bylaw and and uh, proposed proposed the townhouses along uh, Street One One One, not. I mean, facing to the street, but the driveways are from the back, so that like it's it's not only the safety, but it's a it's a good looking feature as well for the city. Uh, so uh, we they are rear facing garages along uh, Road One 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 to minimize disruption of traffic and risk of accidents. Uh, so uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to vegetation, like we 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 are proposing low maintenance, pest resistant shrubs and trees, uh, parking uh, minimum two parking spaces per unit, uh, and and two story townhouses with visually appealing design features. One of the things I I'd like to highlight here is like we are trying to achieve at least like three to four bedroom townhouses in that area, so that that also contributes in affordability. Uh, uh, because of the housing crisis uh, in the market in these days. Next, please. So these are some of the glimpses uh, uh, of uh, proposed townhouses. We're not committing, and uh, I hope council would not be asking the same design at the end. But like uh, this is this is something we have envisioned. Uh, so uh, the top uh, picture is block uh, uh, block house view of the block townhouse, which you. You'd be looking from the cul-de-sac. Uh, the lower one is kind of perspective view of the block townhouse and the street townhouse. That street townhouse uh, is the, the street parallel to one, road 111 is uh, seen, which is going into the subdivision and uh, along the, uh, and the perpendicular to that is the block townhouse, which is 
which is proposed extension of that Doro Street. Hopefully, one day we will we'll achieve that uh, collaboratively. Next, please. Uh, here, uh, this, I don't know if, if it's blurry, uh, please forgive us, but like this, this is how we, we are proposing uh, the street townhouses along uh, street 111. So uh, on the top side, you, you won't see any garages over there, but the bottom is the other side of uh, uh, other elevation of the of that uh, street of those street townhouses where garages are from the back, and the front is street uh, front uh, of these townhouses are facing to street one one one. Next, please. So. Uh, as we as we anticipate our road ahead is to work closely with the agencies community and the city council uh, and we are so happy and and privileged to get public and agency comments uh, we would work with that uh, consultant studies and reports will guide us in ensuring safety and quality and uh, our goal is to be shovel ready by summer 2023 if everything goes all right uh, next, please. So what are the benefits of the community, ben benefits for the community? One is there would be new options for prospective homeowners in, in the city of Stratford. Uh, other one is the economic activity, jobs, investment, and tax revenue. And obviously that part of the city is recently annexed, so there's not enough uh, infrastructure. Uh, we're we're there to install the new infrastructure and municipal services so that that'll be benefit to the community. Mm, on that note, I think I have completed. Next slide, please. Yeah. So thank you for your attendance. Please don't hesitate to share any questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sorger. Um, questions? I see Councillor Henderson. Go ahead. To your wish, if I have several. First of all, I see the townhouses, which are, are great and they're badly needed, especially with more bedrooms. And I'm wondering if any of them will be accessible so that they won't have steps, they have the wider doorways, they have, they're able to pull up, you know, to the stove and the sink, et cetera. Do you want me to ask them all or do you want to answer as I go on? Why, why don't we allow Mr. Soger to answer that and we'll go Thank from you. there. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Yeah, uh, we have we have uh, thought about it, and wherever possible, like fourth bedroom would be on the main main floor, so that like we can accommodate that accessibility issue. Hmm. So my next one is: you say it would be environmentally sensitive. Does that mean you're going to be building like net zero homes? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, thank you for the question again, but uh, I would not be able to commit on anything uh, for that matter, but definitely our direction is, our orientation and direction is to, to, that, uh, to that goal. And, and, my next, and my next one is, you say it's walkable, but, and there's gonna be sidewalks I see along 111, but I'm wondering how people would get into the city or are you just waiting for future connections? If they're walking or riding their bike, you know. Through through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's correct. So we are we are hoping to to get connected with that subdivision which is coming up at the, on the west side of the property and uh, through through a hydro corridor. And my last one is: you say that they're going to be affordable. Do you have a price range, approximately, what they're going to be starting at? Uh, through through uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, thank you for the question. But yeah, it, I, I think it, it is it is premature at this time to 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 think about it. But yeah, I mean we we would be would be definitely on 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 that side to to work uh, uh, for for affordable housing. But yeah, I mean market is uh, market is so volatile these days. So we it'll be premature to to commit to that. Anything further? Councillor Niger and then Councillor Hunter, please, and Councillor Burback. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Niger. Thank you, through your worship. Uh, 
Now, who would service the uh, cul-de-sac uh, roads? Is that would be a city service, or would that be kind of sourced out to a, a third party? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yeah, uh, the, the the streets we are proposing is as per the municipal standards, and our assumption is that city will assume it. That'll be street road. Uh, I mean, uh, city road. Thank you. Councillor Hunter and then Councillor Burback, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my question through you is, um, in regards to the sanitary connections, are you dependent on the subdivision to the west coming online before you connect to sanitary? Or do you have an alternate uh, plan? Through you, Your Worship, that's correct. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have worked with the uh, subdivision to the west and uh, uh, there was one meeting with the city staff as well, so so we are trying to we are trying to connect our sanitary services to the west, uh, so that it'll be it'll be convenient for for all the parties, even for the city. So so that's that's the plan, and that's where I was showing in the in the uh, in the graphic where there's a easement we are we are trying to achieve through Hydro One to 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 provide that service there. And council, thank you. And Councilor Burback. Thank you, through the mayor. I have a few, uh, one question uh, for um, staff, but actually I'm gonna ask a question of the, the presenter first. Um, I, yeah, I was curious, like Councilor Henderson, what uh, exactly environmentally sensitive means? Is that including uh, electric charging vehicles and using native plants. Uh, I'm just curious as to what environmentally sensitive would include. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Through your chair, yes, that's that's correct. So we uh, will follow the guidelines, city's guidelines for environment, the uh, environmentally sensitive design and we'll, we'll, we'll go, go from there. Councillor Burback, did you wanna ask a question at this time? Uh, um, unless we wait uh, and wait for the presenter to be done and then come back to Councillor, uh, come back to Mr. Bannon, or would you like to ask that at this time? Um, it's up to you, Mr. Mayor, whatever. Uh, makes let's, sense. let's finish out the presentation, uh, questions for the presenter, and then if we can come back to Mr. Bannon, if that's okay with you. Thank you. Anything further? Councillor Briscoe. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, are there any community fees um, anticipated for the development? Uh, through your, uh, could, could you please elaborate the question? I, I couldn't get it. Um, similar to a con like a condo fee um, in this kind of complex, um, just speaking to the affordability concerns, if there's any um, kind of community fees in that way that are anticipated. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you for that clarification. Through, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no, it, it, these all are free freehold townhouses, so there won't be any 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 additional fees. Thank you. Any further questions for the representative, the applicant? And we'll come back to uh, to the uh, representative at the very end of the uh, this meeting if there's something else. So at this stage, uh, thank you very much. And we'll uh, we'll perhaps have you make a few closing remarks at the end, okay? And okay. I'm going to Councillor Burback. You had a question for Mr. Bannon. I did. Thanks through the mayor uh, to Mr. Bannon. I I had a question about um, line 34. Is that the same as Highway Seven and Eight? I'd never seen that before. But when they when the presentation came on, I saw that uh, Mr. Sagar had that that line 34 and seven and eight were the same, is that correct? Mr. Bannon. Uh, through uh, your worship, um, I just need to confirm the, that line 34 is actually, I believe it's the road to the south. I'm just trying to find it on one of my plans here. Just give me one split moment here.
Yes, I'm sure that line 34 is the, the road to the, the south of the development, um, which is um, south of the CN Railway. Okay, thank you. I just, I was a little confused by the map. They had it as the same road. So that seemed a little confusing. Um, my other question was, uh, can you give us an update on the status of the subdivision that was proposed to the west of the hydro corridor? Uh, where is that at at the moment? Uh, through your worship, uh, I, I haven't been involved with the subdivision to the west, um, but uh, the manager of planning is here and she can probably give you a better update on uh, where they're at with that development uh, instead. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Hackler. Thank you. So through the mayor to Councillor Burbeck, the application uh, for it's the cash Cache subdivision, and we're still in a reviewing process with them. I believe we're on uh, the second submission, and we've just received uh, all of staff's comments and we forwarded them back to the applicants. So we are waiting on a revised submission, um, and we're hoping that uh, we can bring that forward to council in the new year. Thank you, Ms. Sackler. Anything further? Seeing none, I'm going to turn to, uh, I believe we had one delegation, but I, I'm not sure if it's uh, going to be, I'm going to turn to the clerk on this one. I'm not sure if that delegation is going to be present. Uh, through your worship. So there were two additional uh, individuals who registered to speak being Jamie Dick from MTE and then Thomas Abraham, uh, which is now my understanding that he is part of the overall application. Um, perhaps we will uh, give them an opportunity to uh, say a couple words uh, if they still have anything further to add, if that's agreeable to you. Certainly. Uh, so, Jamie, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank there you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Councillors. Um, yeah, I, I didn't have any additional comments to add after the uh, staff uh, presentation and uh, the planning presentation. Uh, I just wanted to be present if there were any questions that came up related to engineering or any of the reports that MT uh, prepared for this submission. Um, so yeah, no further comments at this time. Thank you. And anything further with regards to delegation, Ms. Defoe? Uh, through you, your worship, uh, we're just working to connect Thomas. Um, Thomas, are you able to unmute yourself? Hi, this is Thomas. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, and thank you, all council members. That's it. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, would, I would like to say thank you for everyone. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And maybe at the end, we'll come back if there's any other closing remarks on behalf of the applicant. So turning to questions and comments from Q&A, uh, Ms. Aikens, is there anything in the Q&A? Uh, through your worship, no comments or uh, questions have been submitted through the Q&A feature in Zoom. Thank you so much. And then our final item is that, is there any closing comments uh, from the applicant representatives? Anything further? Uh, Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no, we do not have any any further comments or, or uh, anything to add uh, other than the affordability thing. Uh, yes, we 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 will try. We will try to make it as affordable as it could be to to serve the community better. That's it for now. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so very much for your information this evening. Thank you. So item number five, city council intends to consider this application at a future planning and heritage committee meeting where members of council will have an opportunity for full discussion of the applications after reviewing comments received from the public at this time. If anyone would like to receive further notice of this application, please email clerks at stratford.ca. A video of this meeting will be posted to the city's website. This public meeting is adjourned. We'll now move to our next uh, application or our next uh, public meeting. And so at this time, I will call the public meeting to order. 
The purpose of this meeting is to give council and the public an opportunity to hear all interested persons with respect to zone change application Z08-22. The application affects existing R4 zoning provisions relating to townhouse dwellings in the city of Stratford. The order of procedure for this meeting will be as follows. Staff will present the application on behalf of the city of Stratford. Council may ask questions for the purpose of clarifying the application, but are cautioned not to make comment nor take a position on this application at this public meeting. Registered delegations will be asked for their presentations, comments, and questions. Delegates are reminded that their questions and comments should be planning related. Questions and comments from the Q&A will be read by a clerk's office staff, Ms. Aikens, and public is advised that if a person has provided council with oral submissions at a public meeting or written submissions before a bylaw is adopted or a decision is made, the Ontario Land Tribunal has the power to dismiss an appeal. The public is also advised that comments expressed and written materials presented are a matter of public record for full disclosure. Are there any questions as to this order of procedure? Seeing none, we will now proceed with the meeting and I'll invite Ms. Uh, Hackler, Manager of Planning to make her presentation. Ms. Hackler, go ahead. Thank you. So I'm just gonna share my screen here and let me know if there's any problems. Thank you, that's great. Go ahead. Perfect, I don't, doesn't seem to be sharing as a, as a presentation. So I'll just, I'll just move forward this way. Uh, that's okay. fine. So this application for zone change was submitted by planning staff on behalf of the city of Stratford. Basically what, uh, what we discovered was that there, is, there are discrepancies with the R4 zone, which are preventing current plans of subdivisions that have blocks that are zoned R4 and uh, site plan applications for various types of townhouses that have a zoning of R4 as well. It's preventing us from moving forward to registering the R4 zone properties, as well as from approving site plans uh, that are for R4 zoned type developments. So basically the R4 zone applies strictly to townhouse developments. As you can see, this is a, the older zoning by, or the old zoning bylaw. In April, 2022, the previous council approved a new zoning bylaw. And generally what happens uh, with zoning bylaws, especially when we undertake a, a comprehensive zoning bylaw review, we end up noticing a number of errors and omissions, typos and whatnot throughout the course of a year. And generally we undertake a housekeeping amendment every year. Um, to address any of those issues. In this case, with the R4 zone, we noticed that the issue was more pressing and that we needed to address this, zone, this zoning right away so that we could proceed with registration as well as approving site plans. So I'll just show council quickly um, what, the, what the issue at hand is. So, so the old zoning bylaw, as you can see, it was separated out, the R4 zone was separated out into two subcategories and then it allowed for four different types of, of dwellings, including a fourplex. The fourplex since has been removed and is now in the R3 zone. So that's, uh, it's no longer part of the R4 zone. However, the townhouses, the various types of townhouses were permitted under both subcategories. And then there are, I didn't show the second page, but there are a couple of zoning provisions that, dif that are different from one another. Um, and they would apply to, um, each of the subcategories. So now the new zoning bylaw that was recently passed, as you can see, it now has four subcategories and it also differentiates between the different types of townhouses. So there's street fronting townhouses are only permitted in the R41 and then cluster townhouses are permitted in the R42, R43 and R44. So the problem is, is that when in the past, when Council has approved site-specific zone changes. So this one, for example, is for 576 alone. And council approved a site-specific zoning, that's an R42-15, which permits three different types of, 
of townhouse type dwellings and, and of course the, uh, the fourplex. And then the only provision that it allows or it has a site specific provision only for the maximum building height. So then generally what uh, the, the planners would do is they would, they would look at the parent zone and they would kick back to the, to the other zoning provisions under the parent zone. However, in this case, so I'll skip back right, right for one second. So in this case, we have street fronting towns and then we kick back to the R42 zone, which is only applies to cluster townhouses. Um, and to, I believe it was Councillor Briscoe's question, the cluster townhouses um, speak to stack townhouses, back-to-back -to -back townhouses, and they're generally constructed on a single, on a full block. So you could potentially have eight units on one block. And so in this case, whereas a street fronting town, as Mr. Bannon described, is generally separately conveyable, it comes in a separate parcel. And so you're not gonna have a lot area of 800 square meters that would apply to a single townhouse unit. So we've, we've come across this issue. And so basically what we're proposing to do is amend the R4 zone so that it'll likely look much more it, it will likely resemble the previous R4 uh, zoning and the previous zoning bylaw uh, with some minor tweaks. And then we also are looking to amend the definitions for the townhouse units, just so that it's more clear um, and more user-friendly for uh, planners like ourselves, council, as well as uh, consultants and developers. So that's that's in a in a nutshell what we're what we're proposing to do, uh, and then in speaking of I, I did mention the housekeeping amendments right now just for council's information, there is a uh, a version of the zoning bylaw that was approved in in April that is going around between building planning um, and bylaw enforcement staff, and people are making notes. Uh, regarding different provisions that they would like tweaked or changed and whatnot. And so that, uh, that is underway. I'm hoping to bring forward a housekeeping amendment for the other um, provisions that we're reviewing right now in the first quarter of 2023. And so that, sorry, excuse me, that concludes my presentation. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Ms. Hackler. Questions from Council? Councillor Burback, I see your hand, go ahead, thank you. Thank you, through the mayor. I'm just curious where stacked townhouses would fit into those definitions, uh, or is that a completely, is that, does that exist under another bylaw? Through Mayor Ritzma to Councillor Burback's question, I actually fully anticipated this question. <laughs> uh, so the, the cluster townhouses include the they include vertically as well as horizontally attached townhouses. So sorry, I'm looking down because I'm looking at my zoning bylaw. So that includes the stack townhouses, which are uh, when we have units on top of one another. So I always describe townhouse units if you have a block of say eight units wide, so eight, we'll say eight front doors kind of thing, then you could in each unit, you could have three kind of subunits within it or so, or two units. And so those are the stacked townhouses and then the back to back, they would be, um, and they would be, they're not overly common in, in smaller cities. It's more uh, uh, a larger urban city thing, but, uh, those would be if you have townhouses that have units that are, are back to back. And then in that case, sometimes you can also have upper and lower units as well. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Henderson, go ahead. Okay, so that brings up a question in my mind through your worship. Um, so when we're trying to promote accessibility in our city and making things more accessible, and we start building things like um, stock townhouses, we already have trouble with developers planning accessible homes with, you know, single homes and with townhouses, but with stock townhouses, it's even worse because, you know, they don't have elevators. So, you know, there's lots of steps in them. So is there a way that we can, as a city, decide not to allow, say, stock townhouses so that we can start eliminating some of this 
problems with accessibility because not just the person buying the house might have accessible issues, but some of their friends or family might or, or future people that are buying. And I realize it's, you know, we, we also want to build up, but I'm just wondering how we work ourselves around this as, as a city. Through Councillor Ritzma to Councillor, sorry, through Mayor Ritzma to Councillor Henderson's question. So with respect to townhouses, in my experience, I have seen, sorry, stacked townhouses. I have seen stacked townhouses that um, have accessibility. Um, I've seen cases where they've had stacked townhouses that would have like a walkout and they propose um, like a sidewalk that would go basically behind the buildings and then the, the units would, would have the walkout at the back. And so those could potentially be accessible. Um, as for actually putting a provision in our zoning bylaw that would require say a percentage of, of um, accessible units, I am not familiar of a case where a municipality has done that. I mean, staff could, could look into that. Um, but I think, yeah, generally speaking from an accessibility standpoint, those units, yeah, would typically be found in apartment buildings um, or if, if the developer chose to, to create them to be accessible. Thank you, Ms. Hackler. Anything further from council? Seeing none, I'm moving down to delegations. I don't believe through the, through the clerk that there are any registered delegations on this item. Through your worship, that is correct. There are no registered delegations. Thank you very much. And I'm going to turn to Ms. Akins. Is there anything from the Q&A that needs to be read? Uh, through you, Your Worship, there are no comments or questions in the Q&A. Thank you very much. And then moving back to Ms. Hackler, anything uh, in the way of a final comment? No, I'm, I have nothing more. Thank you. Thanks so very much. So item number five, City Council intends to consider this application at a future Planning and Heritage Committee meeting where members of Council will have an opportunity for full discussion of the application after reviewing comments received from the public at this time. If anyone would like to receive further notice of this application, please email clerks at Stratford.ca. A video of this meeting will be posted to the City's website. This public meeting is adjourned. And I'll turn the meeting back uh, to Ms. Defoe to the special council agenda. Ms. Defoe. Through your worship, returning to your special council agenda, item four is adjournment to a public meeting under the Building Code Act. And there is a motion that the special council meeting adjourn to a public meeting under the Building Code Act to hear all interested persons with respect to the proposed amendment to building bylaw 112-2005, including fee schedule A, and to reconvene following the public meeting. Thank you. A mover for such. Thank you, Councillor Beatty and Councillor Burback. All in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. So I'll call the public meeting to order. The purpose of this meeting is to give Council and the public an opportunity to hear all interested persons on the proposed amendments to the building bylaw, including fee schedule A. The order of procedure for this meeting will be Staff will provide an overview of the proposed amendments. Council may ask questions, but are cautioned not to, to make comments nor to take a position at this public meeting. Registered delegations will be asked for their presentations, comments, and questions. Delegates are reminded that their questions and comments should be planning related. Comments and questions from the Q&A will be read in by Ms. Akins. The public is also advised that comments expressed and written materials presented are a matter of public record for full disclosure. Are there any questions as to the order of this procedure? Seeing none, we will proceed with this meeting and I will ask uh, Mr. DeWeard, Chief Building Officer, uh, to make the staff presentation. Mr. DeWeard. Uh, thank you, and through you, uh, Mayor Ritzma, uh, the objective tonight is to uh, obviously hold this public meeting to hear for, uh, for the public with regards to the fee changes. Um, under the Building Code Act, we, uh, we are required as a municipality to cover uh, the reasonable costs in enforcing and administering the Building Code.
through the charging of fees. Um, in, in regards to these fees, both the direct and indirect costs are eligible. Uh, in order to manage some of the fluctuations in the, uh, the building code activity, we do, uh, the act does allow for a reserve fund and the city does have a reserve fund for these fees. Uh, the, the fees that we are considering are contained within the schedule A, uh, which is attached to this report. And the, uh, the last uh, review and increased uh, of fees happened in the city in 2021. Uh, just want to uh, bring to council's attention that uh, with the proposed fee structure, uh, we would see an increase for a single detached dwelling from $1.35 a square foot up to $1.40 a square foot, which is approximately a 4% increase in the fees. Uh, as, as you can read in the, uh, in the report, uh, the, the current inflation that we have from uh, you know, uh, the year over year September was 6.9%. Uh, and in co construction inflation generally runs higher than, uh, than uh, the consumer uh, price index. And uh, that uh, is somewhere in around the 18 and a half uh, upwards of Toronto, where you get up over 25% uh, right now, what we're looking at for uh, residential construction costs. So we've, uh, we've, we've kept a, a modest increase of 4%, uh, which would uh, add about $75 to permit fees, bringing permit fees for a 15 100 square foot bungalow from around $2,025 up to $2,100 in, in uh, building permit fees. Uh, we've also added a clarification uh, with regards to Bill 23 in, in Schedule C of the building bylaw uh, for consideration. And we've added some potential required documents. So we've clarified in there uh, that a lot grading plan or a lot drainage plan may be required as well as a stormwater management plan uh, including reports and or drawings. Now these, these were added specifically for um, units that would not now require uh, going through site plan approval, just to, to give the city some tools to mitigate some of our uh, bylaw uh, complaints in the future that we can still ensure that these developments are, uh, are proceeding in a manner that it's not gonna be um, intrusive to neighboring properties as we see uh, intensification. Um, beyond that, um, Mayor Ritzma, I don't have anything else, but I am definitely uh, open to any questions or uh, that, that council or the public may have on this. Thank you, Mr. DeWeird. Questions, and I see Councillor Hunter. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And through you, uh, my question is, uh, your report references a shortfall in the reserve fund. Is that a true shortfall or is it just created by timing so that uh, money would be coming in in a subsequent fiscal period that would that would cover that shortfall. Thank you, Council Hunter, Mr. DeWeird. Thank you, and uh, through you, uh, Mayor Itzma. Yeah, Councilor uh, Hunter, that's that's a great question. So, um, yeah, ge generally speaking, we would, uh, as noted in here, like to have 100% of our operating costs, which is a good um, is a good number to float in case we have a bad year. Uh, what we're seeing this year trending is that we're going to be slightly lower. So we're going to have to draw from some of those funds. Um, we're right around $300,000 in the reserve for fund right now. And our annual operating costs uh, have fluctuated between around $750,000 uh, up around $900,000 in the last uh, four or five years. So what we're seeing is we're slightly low, but uh, as you mentioned, with a lot of the development that's upcoming in the next couple of years anticipated in the city, we do anticipate that that reserve will start to come back up. Uh, and we do anticipate that, you know, we may be in a, in a case in a couple of years if we have some good years to, to not have to increase uh, our, our building permit fees on a year over year basis. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything further? Councillor Henderson, go ahead. You mentioned this at Bill C-23, so, if we're not getting the money in through development fees, um, I'm just curious how this is gonna play into it. And like, how is it going to increase when they don't have to pay the fees? Or are they still gonna to have to pay the permit fees? So uh, through, through the mayor to Councillor Henderson, uh, building permit fees uh, have not been in, in the Building Code Act is not uh, proposed to be amended through Bill 23. Okay. Uh, and uh, in development charges is not 
is not kind of part of tonight's discussion. I do understand that there may be some more information coming for council uh, in a future meeting to kind of explain some of the DC changes. Um, but yeah, in, in a general sense with this, what we're looking to change in schedule C is, is types of plans that uh, would have been dealt with through a site plan approval process that we will not have a site plan approval process for units uh, at 10 or fewer units. Uh, you know, so some of these block townhouses like we were talking about tonight, if it's on a standalone parcel, uh, they would be able to go directly to a building permit. So that's that's what we're looking at here, Councillor Henderson. Thank you. Anything further? Councillor Briscoe. Thank you. Uh, through your worship. With that um, anticipated kind of uh, growth coming, um, it will, is the current staff capacity um, able to handle that or will we also need to increase staff capacity, which could lead to another um, increase later? So uh, through uh, through Mayor Ritzma to Council Bisco, uh, again, great question. Um, as far as staffing right now, we are we are in a, I would say we're in a, a decent position. Um, as the budget's forthcoming, uh, there, there is a revised or, or an additional position that we're looking at, but that was uh, partially through um, the changes that were made with the short-term uh, rental program. So uh, I would suggest we stay tuned on that one, but, but there will likely be some more staffing required and some potential changes to the, uh, the breakdown of the staff within the department as we move forward. And, and I'll just... Uh caution council that we don't venture too far off off the uh, public meeting but more information on both your question and councillor henderson's question will come through human resources and corporate services as we move along but very good questions but perhaps to save for another day any other questions comments thank you mr deweird um I don't believe, I'm, I'm looking to the clerk, I don't believe there's any registered delegations at this time. Uh, through you, Worship, that is correct. Thank you. And I'm turning to Ms. Aikens, anything from the clerk's office with regards to the Q&A? Uh, through you, Your Worship, uh, no comments or questions have been submitted to the Q&A feature. Thank you very much. So City Council intends to consider this proposed amendment uh, at a future uh, infrastructure, transportation and safety committee meeting where members of council will have an opportunity for a full discussion of the amendments after reviewing comments received from the public at this time. If anyone would like to receive future notice of this matter, please email clerks at stratford.ca. A video of this meeting will be posted to the city's website. This public meeting is adjourned and I'll turn the meeting back to Mr. Fo. Through you, Worship, we're turning again to your special council meeting agenda. Item five is reading of the bylaws and there is one bylaw listed for consideration being the confirmatory bylaw. It requires first and second reading and then third and final reading. Thank you very much. Your first and second, thank you, Councillor Beattie and Councillor Burback. We'll move and second that. All in favor? Opposed if any, and that's unanimous. And then moving to the third and final mover for that. Thank you, Councillor Briscoe and Councillor Hunter. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the question. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is unanimous. And then our final item of tonight's agenda is a motion to adjourn. Moved by uh, Councillor McCabe and seconded by, I'm sorry, Councillor. Uh, Niger, all in favor, opposed of any, and that's unanimous. Thank you everybody for a, a great meeting and we'll see you soon. Thank you.